welcome. Uh, I'm going to uh, begin this by saying, uh, here I have a very dry introduction to a fascinating man. And uh, I might just let him tell his own fascinating introduction, but let me tell you how I found out about him. The very first person I met in Los Angeles in 1970, I have remained friends with. And a couple of years ago, she called me and she said, would you be willing to do some work for this foundation I'm associated with? And I said, of course. And that's when she introduced me to the VOD Foundation, which is a uh, school set up in South Sudan by the most amazing man you will meet certainly today, if not this month and this year. Real quick, Valentino Achekdeng is an advocate for the right to universal education and sustainable development. He grew up in Southern Sudan where he was separated from his family during the second Sudanese civil war. He then lived for nine years in Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, where he received his education and began his public service career. In 2001, he resettled in Atlanta and has toured the U.S. and Europe, speaking about his life in Sudan, his experience as a refugee, and his collaboration with author Dave Eggers on What is the What?, the novelized version of Valentino's life story as one of the Lost Boys of Sudan. In 2006, they established the Valentino Achek Deng Foundation to help rebuild Sudanese communities by increasing access to educational opportunities. The foundation's focus is on quality education, vocational training, sustainable development, and girls' education. Despite his many hardships, he maintains an unwavering positive outlook on South Sudan and believes the solution lies in increased education and knowledge of human rights and improved economic opportunities. That just gives you a brief glimpse of this wonderful man. Thank you, sir. Take it away. Thank you very much, Nita. Uh... I appreciate your wonderful welcoming and kind words. And I also would like to greet everyone this morning. I feel blessed to be part of your morning gathering. It means a lot to me. Uh, as Nita said, my name is Valentino Achak Denk. I was a victim of the Sudanese civil war in the 1980s. Uh, that war that internally displaced more than 4.5 million people and caused life of more than 2.5 million people and made more than 1.5 million people fled the country as refugees. I was one of those refugees. After leaving my family, I became an unaccompanied minor in an exodus where over 30,000 South Sudanese children trekked over an unforgiving land on bare foot to find refuge. Hungry, mostly unclothed and sickly, we were bombed by the Sudanese armed forces, ambushed and attacked by ground troops, and denied food, medicine, and severity by other hostile proxy arms groups. The suffering was far too much for me and I personally wanted to end my life to be free, but my angel refused. And I'm glad to be alive today. I was resettled in the United States in September 2001 in Atlanta. I chronicled part of my story in a book called What is the What? with the help of author Dave Eggers. Over the years, I have learned to endure and persevere and have transformed by accepting and forgiving 
others. I have discovered I was blessed to escape from the conflict with the gift of life. I am blessed to have met many passionate and generous people during my struggles. I am blessed with the family and beautiful children. I established the VAD Foundation in 2006 to help educate young people with the knowledge, the skills, good attitudes, and desirable values. Lack of quality and valuable education is one of the main factors responsible for poverty, ignorance, diseases, and conflicts in developing countries like South Sudan, where I work. At the VAD Foundations, we educate thousands of children from uh, <clears throat> uh, families that have a lot of social and financial issues. And we work with these children and seeing them grow, seeing them go to school is one of the amazing tasks that have become a turning point of my life. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. You may take over, Nita. You're muted, Nita. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to hear about um, your struggles in setting up the schools and why you chose to educate young women, because the majority of your students are women, girls. And I'd love to hear about how that came about. I have learned through my struggle that it is women that brand all the hurt of conflict and violence. And it is even women who are responsible for families. Through my own mother, who told me during the war that if she all if she was it was possible she would have swallowed me so that I don't suffer. Oh that is all meant to protect me. Through many women and girls that I have worked with, all they do is to go and give back in the family to support some someone to care about food for the children, for the family, for the community. And I believe that if I am able to educate young girls, they then become responsible women and they become responsible mothers and members of the community. So I'm so passionate about girls' education. And now I work with some of young girls you would need to admire. They don't have enough food. They don't have a lot of things that they need, but they struggle. Some walk for two miles, three miles, and five miles to go to school every morning. Hmm. I want to make a difference in the life of those young women and many children, of course. And in doing uh, work on the uh, on the uh, reports, uh, those girls do really well. They love it, and they are they they score high on their. They're hungry. They're hungry not to be just sold into marriage, so to speak, at a young age. And that's basically the only choice they have is to marry young or to go to one of your schools. They work very hard. They want to, to, to lead. They want to provide. They want to have skills, knowledge, good attitude, and values that change their life and that of their communities. I, I have come to be shedding tears when I see them sink and work hard to be accepted and to belong and to be educated. And how was your experience uh, when the book had been written? What was the, uh, the response for you personally after 
uh, Dave Eggers wrote the book, which became a quite a, a bestseller. Many people, when I talk about you and I say, have you ever heard of the Lost Boys of Sudan? I have not, one person has said no. Everybody said, oh yes. So you were quite the uh, personality as a young man. I've been, th I have been through so much and I wanted to reach out to humanity, to talk to people, to share the stories that are affecting people elsewhere. And that could also help people uh, reflect on their life. Uh, Dave helped me to do that. And he did not only help, he committed himself. He was like, Valentino, whatever you want to do, let me know. Let us try. And so when the book came out, we established the VAD Foundation to be able to reach out to people, to network and provide uh, the much needed help where it was needed. I traveled back to South Sudan, very remote place with uh, different uh, kind of people. Some of them are just a part of my life. They, they are amazing group of uh, young women, men, and things like that. And so when we establish the VAD Foundation, people uh, come to find out what I am doing and try to make a difference. Of course, we are always looking for those kind of different, uh, given the complexity of our work and remoteness of places where we go, and that the needs there are all ever increasing and we're making impact. So the foundation gave me that platform to not only tell the story, but to also go back and make a difference. What's going on in South Sudan right now? And are you and your your girls and your team in any danger? Uh, no, we are not. We are facing financial obstacles due to effects of COVID-19 and also due to global financial crisis and the local inflation because the country had had its own uh, local uh, uh, in tricks. Those things affect the market where we operate, but the girls are safe, the boys are safe, our team is working really hard, but do we face challenges uh, as a result of things that are happening elsewhere and they come uh, to affect us. And you've brought boys in now. Yes, we, we realize we have to educate boys to be able to educate girls properly. <laughs> That's a good point. You got to teach the boys if you're going to teach the girls. Excellent. So, uh, what is your, how many schools do you have now? And what is your dream? What would be like, as we say in America, if you won the lottery and you had all this money, what would you, what would be your dream? The Talk dream. About? The dreams would be to uh, expand on our current level of education and get uh, infrastructure, things like uh, computer labs, science labs, <clears throat> teacher education, build accommodation for girls and boys, and be able to take children from elementary school to high school and to uh, vocational training programs. We have realized do you, do mostly, you do mostly vocational training. Yes, the, the kids we, the kids we are educating are, are not able to go to universities all. We have fewer means to be able to affect that. But vocational education will help them create opportunities for themselves, food production, uh, manufacturing, uh, mechanical work, masonry all those kind of skills that would be able to give them the mean to be entrepreneurs and to be productive and to add value to the society. Okay. So they are, they are, uh, are there workshops? What, what classes do they take? 
Uh, now they take normal curriculum classes in science and arts and general subjects. But for them to have the skills, they would have to have the skills in agriculture. We do a small agriculture practical work. We do crops farming, we do aquaculture, we do animal husbandry. But what they mean we would be able to expand on that. We also train them in recreational activities, in writing, in drama, in poetry, in uh, dance. Uh, we do them at a very minimal level. But uh, all of that is done to, to, to help them realize their potential talents and utilize it. Wow. Art is art is so necessary. It's wonderful to hear. Um, I'm gonna open it up. Does anybody would anybody like to join the conversation here? Patricia's had her hand up. Yeah. Hi, Valentino. Welcome. Um, my question is um, does the foundation include classes on health and wellness and sexual education? Uh, yes, we do those kind of training, but uh, we require empowerment to be able to provide uh, tools. For example, many girls are teenagers and they suffer from uh, gender-based violence issues. And sometimes uh, they are mistreated either in the community or sometime by some uh, people in uh, on the way to school or out. Uh, this is becoming uh, an essential element for us to train them on how to protect themselves and how to behave and stay away from trouble. We also have issues with sanitary and hygiene and we have girls sometime missing school because they don't have the means to support themselves in that kind of area. Uh, so yes, uh, we provide that, but uh, with a limitation due to our capacity. Thank you. You're Sam. welcome. Sam. Yes, um, Valentino, the title of your memoir, what is the what? Could you explain that title? Uh, just give me a sense of what the why you chose that title. And the title is adopted from uh, a, a, a traditional Dinka story of creation. Oh, okay. Uh, where they were given choices to choose between the, the Dinka are nomadic people, pastoral nomadic, they keep animals. And they chose between the animal, the cow, and everything else. But again, through my story, it has come to symbolize uh, choices that are made sometime uh, that uh, become complex in the way people uh, utilize or even grow or undergrow with them. So it's a very extensive uh, meaning. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I guess a lot of very complex choices in your in your schools and so forth in that part of the world. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think Linda had her hand up. Good. Um, thank you for being here, and thank you for. Uh, what you're telling us. I want to go back to a moment. Valentino, you talked about you wanted to end your life. And I'm wondering if uh, the impetus for changing the world came at that moment because you didn't end your life. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. I had... Uh... I had uh, an instance, a point in my life where I, I have no other option but suffering. And I did not see the reason for continuing. 
I did not blame anybody because I was young. I was a little boy. It was just life was so difficult and unbearable. Oh. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was sick. I had limited option. My parents were not with me. And but then later on, I I became uh, a a committed uh, Catholics and I learned catechism and I came to also be a responsible young person who became a peer counselor and became a leader in that environment, providing hopes and helps to other young people. Now I had learned that enduring, persevering and overcoming difficulties is going to be a part of my life that I must accept. Mm. And by accepting that, I, I persevered. Then I came to the U.S. and was blessed to meet with so many compassionate, so many admirable and very helpful individuals. So I had been welcomed and I looked back through my story and I began to feel like I am not a victim. Ooh. I am actually having to go back and help people who have not been blessed with the gift I have. So I stopped thinking in that direction, and I began thinking about transforming others, creating agents of positive change in the society, and going back and working with the young people who all needed valuable things such as the skills, knowledge, good attitude, and desirable values. So that is how I came to be to, to have a turning point. Whoa. Thank you very much. Thank you, you are welcome. I notice Cher has joined us. Are you there, Cher? Would you like to say hello? Cher works with Valentino. There, Cher. Hello. Welcome. Hi. I was having a little trouble getting the screen back on and unmuting, but hi, thank you so much for having us. Um, obviously, you know, the, the VAD Foundation is all about, you know, Valentino's life and his work, but I'm also happy to be here. Um, I started at the VAD Foundation in April, and I've been really learning a lot about what we do on the ground in South Sudan. Um, and I'm just really thrilled to be able to support this mission as you um, as you know, uh, from Valentino's uh, talk and from our website, which I dropped in the chat, um, we really just aim to empower um, children, youth, women, girls specifically in South Sudan through education, vocational training, and um, sustainable development initiatives as well, as Valentino described a bit. So we're very happy to be here and share um Valentino's insights and raise awareness of the work we're doing. So thank you all for your openness to hearing about what we do. Thank you, Shia. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Sarah has her hand up. Yeah, I, thank you. Um, Valentino, thank you for being here. Your story is very inspiring. Um, I don't know, it must have been 20 years ago when I first went to college. I was working on an art project uh, that was called Never Again Project, and it was about the genocide in Sudan, and we were to create art based on what was going on in Sudan. And uh, I was able, through an organization, I was able to get my hands on letters that girls had written, girls in Sudan had written uh, to this organization about their stories and about what was going on. And um, 
I created a blanket from those letters. I put them all together and created a quilt. Um, and that was my art project. But talk about a turning point. It was, I was so inspired by these girls and their stories. And, you know, here I am in college in America, you know, living the great life and uh, had no idea about, you know, what was, hadn't even heard of Sudan until I, you know, I was, I worked on that project and I was so deeply touched by their stories and what were they, they were going through and yet somehow they, they still had hope and they were so strong, young, young girls, you know, in elementary school. So it was really touching and to this day, I, you know, I have the letters in a box um, somewhere and um, I was really, really touched. And so the work that you're doing is really amazing. And um, thank you for being here and sharing your story and your work. You are welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Ah, Paul. Yeah, so I have a question about your courses. What what kind of tools do you use? What do you teach them when they first sign up for a course? What, what's the process? So we have uh, two kinds of education. We have uh, regular curriculums developed by the host country for elementary and uh, high school, and uh, they take general courses in mathematics, in English, in uh, native languages, in science. When it reaches to high school, then you have uh, science subjects, biology, chemistry, physics, and also uh, social studies, history, geography, and number. But now when they graduate from that, that's when we go for more skillful and practical experience. But we have shortage of colleges where the children go to. So we op we're opting for a vocational uh, in institutions where the children learn the skills in, say, carpentry, masonry, farming, mechanical engineering, and manufacturing and business management and skills like that. So we hope to be growing to provide opportunities to kids that have finished the 12th grades and need to learn some skills. And also kids that could be completing the eighth grades and have to do some work if they stop going to school. So uh, those are the courses we have. Thank and you. then we have community development work, which so covered a lot of community work. Yeah. When they're when you enroll them or bring them in this course, what what is their reaction? What how do they feel about getting this education? Amazed, they are amazed. We we were the first high school ever to be established. Mm. in that territory in 2009. <clears throat> and the children we have educated, uh, some of them have now become medical pro uh, professionals and, um, and different kinds of skills. So many young kids are inspired to come to our learning centers. Uh, so it, it's amazing for them to be able to attend high school to graduate from high school, then we create an environment that is uh, conducive for learning that brings children together from diverse uh, uh, cultural and social backgrounds. So we're small, but the needs is uh, huge. Caroline has her hand up. Hello. 
and thank you for being here. And I have some questions. Do you, uh, what, how many students do you have usually at any one time? Uh, are the students, is there something like a summer vacation there or a winter vacation or something? Um, and how many students are usually in a classroom? And and what what is your application like? Is there ever anybody that you do not accept into the school? For what reason? Yes, for those we sponsored directly, the scholarships are provided based on the capacity. But they also have to go through what we call intakes exams, where one must certify to be uh, uh, capable of learning. And then we also give special consideration to the needy children that comes from families that might have not supported their education from the foundation level. Uh, our class capacity are uh, huge because of the demands. Usually the class capacity is supposed to be 45, but now we realize a number of classes have more than that because the, the need just to attend a class to have a trained teacher uh, providing instruction is 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 of high demand and we are the one of the people who provide that the school enrollment is over thousands the schools is big i am under pressure to provide an infrastructure to meet that demand to provide instructors to educate the children, to provide meal on site so that the children don't leave school and we retain an enrollment. Uh, it, it's amazing to be doing this kind of work. And that's why I was saying, I feel blessed to be, to have made the decision to leave and to endure. Our website is up, share uh, uh, posted it, and I am usually available on WhatsApp, which I will be happy to share. And uh, it's an amazing work. Mac has his hand up. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, um, Valentino, for your presentation today. Um, I was truly touched by the great work you are doing in Sudan. Um, I will say a few things before I ask you my question. First, your name has a strong meaning. I think your name, Valentino, should be Italian, which means uh, brave and strong. And you're truly a very brave and strong man. Again, in common life, the name Valentino, which would be the equivalent of Valentine, is associated with so much love. And I see all that in you. You're a strong and lovable person. I am so happy with the work you are doing. And I just want to say thank you for making a difference in Sudan. I want to ask you, from the angle of vocational training, after these young people are trained in a particular skill, when they come out, when they graduate, how are they assisted to become independent so that they don't need to depend on charity, they don't need to depend on scholarship of some sort. They can, how, how, do they, how do they become independent? How do they work? Are they employed somewhere to practice the skill they have, they have learned? Or are they supported to start a business of their own? I'd like to have an idea about that so I can also learn. 
One of thank you, thank you, Mark Davis. I appreciate your contribution. But one of the issues that is affecting job creations in developing countries and in South Sudan in particular is the lack of skills and the capacity to be able to innovate and create. The market is there. And what I would like to do with our vocational education is to be able to provide the skill necessary for someone to become an entrepreneur, for someone to be able to, to, to grow cash crops, to maybe process it, and to sell it and generate revenues and create employment opportunity for herself or themselves. So that area, if, when we are able to provide vocational education, we are also creating jobs through facilitation of that skills and the mean by someone to generate revenues for themselves. It will help the national agenda of creating jobs. If that person uh, is lucky to get unemployment, they may as well be productive in where they are employed and they grow those corporation and industries. So I am starting from scratch. A lot of time enrolling children whose family members have never been in a school. And so you ended up graduating them from high school and you wonder where are they going to job and to get job and where will they because where will they migrate? Because if there is no job at home, they will migrate and that is the brain drain. But if they have the skills and can innovate and create uh, work opportunities at home, they will stay and they will improve the living standards of their family and community members. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Thank you very much, um, Valentino. It answers my question. Thanks. Tim has his hand up. Uh, yes, Valentino, what a wonderful journey you have been on. I was wondering if you might let us in a little bit to your understanding about divinity and God and your connection? I mean, is it through Jesus with the Catholic Church or is there other kinds of connections you have with divinity where you feel you might be guided in your mission here? Uh, if that's too personal and you don't want to share it, it's fine. But uh, with someone like you who has done such amazing work, curious to see how you're guided and where this inner kind of uh, uh, life energy and divine energy comes from. I, when I was young and wondering, I had a Catholic priest called Dominic Matong. And he taught me about the Oxidus and the struggle. And that thousands of us who are wandering are children of God, and God would not let us down. And that I have to tend to faith in God as my foundation. Uh, from then, I grew to learn to accept that living also goes along with struggling with many things including environmental factors at times. And I usually reference to the biblical verses in Corinthians 6, verse 3 to 13. And it talked to me and to us about enduring, about struggling to overcome the challenges. So I do fasting also, and it helped me uh, to understand myself and my environment. Okay, we have a few minutes left, and uh, I don't know if we have time, but Dana uh, suggested we share your website. 
screen share it for a bit. Is that okay with you? And do we have time? And can you do that, Dana? That is that is okay. If you also, I'm in LA until Friday, but I'll be in the US for the next three weeks. So I'm still around. We can chat, we can talk, we can share opinions. Great. Here's the website. And, and we'll send it out by email also. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. How can, how can we help? How can we support the work you're doing, Valentino? Uh, looked at our website. We are always raising money to keep children in school and to enroll more where necessary. We are also looking for infrastructure. Uh, uh, if anybody is able to help us establish classrooms, establish libraries, provide computers, solar powers, farming tools, uh, we are always looking for those. Uh, you could also host events to fundraise. You could introduce us to your friends. You could introduce us to policy makers that impact development and changes uh, outside the US and in the US. So uh, there are so many ways and you can learn through the websites. And now I am in touch with you. So do not hesitate to, to, to keep in touch. I would appreciate that. I am now in LA doing fundraising I'm going to San Diego this afternoon. I'll be going to San Francisco. I'll go to Colorado and I travel to meet, share and engage with you. I mean, just the cost of uniforms alone because these, these children have no clothes to speak of. And I was so impressed that they all are so beautiful. Look at that. I mean, Ugh. It's amazing. And all those are very happy and smiling girls. Yes. I think we should all go over. Who's with me? I think we should all go visit. <laughs> that is amazing. We I'll would go. have I would be happy to welcome you at our workplace and meet the children. Oh, it'd be beautiful. Beautiful. Well, uh, we have uh, three minutes, and um, anybody have any more questions? If not, would you like to say anything you haven't said, Valentino? I say send money. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have one. I have a question. Um, Valentino, so... I have a question. I'm so glad that uh, you found that first Corinthians and the faith inside of you to keep, to keep going. I wonder, so at your school, do you also, uh, do you teach uh, and expose the children to different religions, the Catholic religion, uh, spirituality? How, how is that? How does that work? Uh, the children are taught uh, uh, about religions and spirituality and religious tolerance. So actually on every Mondays and Fridays, we have assemblies in the morning where we invite uh, different faith groups to pray with them, to pray for us. And among the children are also devoted spiritual leaders. Uh, we cry, we nail, we raise our hands, we, we do everything to stay strong spiritually. And are you, uh, as the Catholic, does, are you sponsored by any religion? Are there, are, are, have, have they noticed what you're doing and, and helping your your absolutely amazing quest to keep this school thriving. No sponsoring religious groups have come, but we do work with the local religious leaders from 
different denominationals to empower faith and to pray with the children. They also are in need, but uh, I would be open up to an opportunity where a religious group comes in and help sponsor uh, the empowerment of faith and spirituality. Thank you so much for uh, all all that you're doing. It's it's absolutely breathtaking. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I am in LA until Friday. Let's all go have lunch. <laughs> I just popped, I'll just chime in here. I just popped some information in the chat. Um, if folks want to take a look, I know we talked about the VAD Foundation's needs, obviously as a nonprofit, a huge need um, to support the work that Valentino is doing in South Sudan is always going to be donations. So vadfoundation.org slash donate. It would be huge to us if you could get on board. Um, Valentino also mentioned potentially hosting events um, when he's in the U.S., um, or even virtual events like this. If you're interested, you could email me. It's share at vadfoundation.org. And yes, Valentino is in LA now, has a day trip to San Diego today, but does have some free time in LA um, tomorrow and the next day and a bit on Friday as well before he flies out. So if you want to have coffee, uh, email me. I'll look at his schedule and we'll try and set something up that matches your availability if you're in the LA area. So. Thank you, Cher. Thank you, Valentino. This Thank is, you all. May God this bless has touched, you. Touched our hearts deeply, and we we hope to support you. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome.